Intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of a true democratic spirit. Gandhi. Twitter has a long history of using its terms of service as a false pretense to ban those who exercise their First Amendment right to free speech to speak out against feminist bigotry. This includes the LBGT community. If you remember, in July 2016, Twitter banned gay conservative journalist Milo Yiannopoulos for harassment. Even though Milo was married to a black man, feminists falsely painted him as a neo-Nazi. So what was the nature of his alleged harassment? Well, Milo published a negative review of the feminist Ghostbusters, and in it, he stated that feminist actress Leslie Jones was unappealing. For those who don't remember, feminist Ghostbusters was horrible on a variety of levels and received numerous negative reviews. While Milo has called himself a troll numerous times, he was only banned from Twitter after feminist Leslie Jones complained to Twitter management that she was upset at Milo. In fact, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey publicly white-knighted for her in his banning of Milo from the platform. To my knowledge, Jack, nor anyone else at Twitter, has ever identified a single example of harassment committed directly by Milo that led to his banning, other than exercising his constitutional right to freedom of the press by publishing his feminist Ghostbusters review. Now, let's fast forward to 2017. In fall 2017, Twitter attempted to unethically interfere with a U.S. federal election when they blocked Republican Representative Marsha Blackburn's Senate campaign announcement and attempted to stifle Blackburn's constitutionally protected First Amendment right to free political speech. According to CBS News report on October 9, 2017, quote, Republican Rep. Marsha Blackburn's Senate campaign announcement ad has been blocked by Twitter over a statement the abortion rights opponent makes about the sale of fetal tissue for medical research. Blackburn, who is running for the seat being opened by the retirement of Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, boasts in the ad that she stopped the sale of baby body parts. A Twitter representative told the candidate's vendors on Monday that the statement was deemed an inflammatory statement that is likely to evoke a strong negative reaction. Twitter said the Blackburn campaign would be allowed to run the rest of the video if the flag statement was omitted. Blackburn took to Twitter to urge supporters to repost her video and join her in standing up to Silicon Valley. Blackburn was the chair of a Republican-run House panel created to investigate Planned Parenthood and the world of fetal tissue research that earlier this year urged Congress to halt federal payments to the Women's Health Organization. The panel was created after anti-abortion activists released secretly recorded videos in 2015 showing Planned Parenthood officials discussing how they sometimes provide fetal tissue to researchers. Twitter, in response to being called out for its unethical effort to silence Blackburn's constitutionally protected speech, reversed its position. Gizmodo reports on October 10, 2017, in a statement to Gizmodo, a Twitter spokesperson explained the original call was made on the basis of its advertising moderation policy rather than violations of its more general terms of service. The site said that it potentially overstepped, however, by applying that standard to a political ad. As everyone knows, Planned Parenthood is found by racist feminist Margaret Sanger and for decades has promoted a variety of feminist causes beyond abortion. Twitter has a history of censoring those who oppose feminist bigotry. As you can see from the two examples I've cited, Twitter is so narcissistic they interfered with a U.S. federal election and retaliated against a journalist for a negative movie review. While I would support Twitter taking action against those who express a hatred of women on their platform, it's important to note that Twitter's terms of service don't list disagreement or opposition to feminist ideology as a legitimate reason to ban or censor anyone. Why is this important? It's because feminism isn't a gender. It's a political movement and ideology. Yet, feminists unethically reframe any opposition to their ideology as a hatred of women, even though feminists themselves often target women for criticism, including transgender women. Speaking of which, a few months ago, I came out publicly on the TFM show as a masculine presenting transgender lesbian. That is, I look and act like a masculine male, but identify as female and am only attracted to women. Masculine presenting transgender lesbians make up a very small, extremely marginalized group within the trans community, and as such, many of us stay in the closet. However, after I came out as trans, I started noticing a disturbing trend. Feminists were starting to discriminate against trans women, myself included. You see, 
Last month, Twitter permanently banned my account. Why? Well, on February 12th, 2018, they emailed me their reason as, Your account has been suspended and will not be restored because it was found to be violating Twitter's terms of service, specifically the Twitter rules against hateful conduct. It is against our rules to promote violence against or directly attack or threaten other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability, or disease. Additionally, if we determine that the primary purpose of an account is to incite harm towards others on the basis of these categories, that account may be suspended without prior warning. Notice how they didn't include any specific reason or examples. This is because Twitter targeted me because of my opposition to unethical and dishonest feminist bigotry. You see, my Twitter handle was Misandry Today, and in a few short months, I had amassed over 2,500 followers, and that number was continuing to grow daily. The main focus of my Twitter account was to call out feminists for dishonest and unethical behavior. I even created the hashtag, hashtag Feminist Lies Matter. Also, prominently displayed and pinned to my feed was my self-published Amazon best-selling book, The Feminist Lie. It was never about equality. It was released in late May 2017 and has over 95 reviews and Amazon rates at a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's been out less than a year and has already sold thousands of copies. When it was first released, Twitter feminists repeatedly harassed me, and even though I reported their harassment, Twitter took no action against them. Shortly after Twitter permanently suspended my account, many of my 2,500 plus followers sent me screenshots showing me they were blocked from my feed and that I had blocked them. However, there is no way I could have blocked them, as I was suspended from Twitter and I had no access to my account. The only rational conclusion is that Twitter blocked them and falsely made it appear as though I was blocking them instead. In doing this, Twitter's unethical conduct appears to be a conscious bad faith attempt to damage my reputation and my relationship with my book customers, my YouTube subscribers, and other social media followers. Even more damning, because Twitter's doing this to me and I can prove it, it's reasonable to conclude that I'm not the only one who's been similarly discriminated against for opposition to feminist bigotry. Even worse, once suspended, a fellow YouTuber, LilyEven32, started sharing my videos on Twitter. On February 17th, she posted the following tweet. Twitter hates DDJ, apparently. When it unsuspends him, it glitches really bad, won't let people follow him, then resuspends him. Twitter is legit targeting him. Then later that same day, she posted the following tweet directed at Twitter support. Dear at Twitter support, I am extremely disappointed in the bigotry shown in the blatant targeting of the at Misandry Today page. As a transgendered person, they have overcome many obstacles. The discrimination Twitter has shown toward a person trying to be accepted is appalling. Hashtag LBGT. Then four days later, on February 21st, she posted the following tweet. Because some people are unfit for Twitter, at Misandry Today, here's a link to the Misandry Today website. You can contact DDJ through it, and there's a link to his book, plus other hidden gems. Now, right after that tweet was posted, Lily contacted me and told me that Twitter had locked her out of her account. At the time... I expressed concern that Twitter was targeting Lily because of her support of me. While she initially dismissed my concerns, I later discovered Twitter did in fact target her. You see, on that same day, Breitbart reported, quote, A former Twitter employee blamed the company's head of trust and safety, Del Harvey, after the platform locked out thousands of conservative users overnight in what has been dubbed the Twitter lockout. Although some accounts were unsuspended today, it is unclear how many remain banned, with some conservatives reporting that all or most of their followers have returned. Mashable reports that conservative users were inaccurately flagged as bots and locked out of their accounts. Locked out accusers were asked to provide a phone number to regain access. A former Twitter employee said Trump supporters had been defined as bots and that it wasn't an accident. It wasn't a mistake, the former employee said. They defined Trump supporters as bots. The only reason they are backpedaling is because they got caught. The source went on to blame Twitter's head of trust and safety, Del Harvey, for the purge. I'm sure the Vanity Fair article got under her skin, said the source, referring to a recent article that criticized Twitter for failing to curb bots and abuse on the platform. She's a hardcore SJW, social justice warrior, and has a vindictive streak, <laughs> don't they all? Twitter flagging Trump supporters and conservatives as bots corroborates footage obtained by undercover journalists at Project Veritas last month 
which shows a Twitter employee equating Trump supporting accounts with bots. So basically, because Lily was identified by Twitter as being associated with me, Twitter classified her as a bot and locked her out of her account. Fortunately, she was later able to recover it. The thing is, Lily isn't conservative. She's a center-left egalitarian. The Twitter purge was so extreme that The New Yorker reported that U.S. President Donald Trump lost tens of millions of followers because Twitter falsely flagged them as bots. By the time Twitter's feminist witch hunt was done, Trump had only 14 followers left. Many of them were his family members. And if that weren't damning enough, Bloomberg reports that Twitter was also caught unethically removing followers from conservative Twitter users. So, let's recap. There's now documented direct evidence that Twitter is discriminating against anyone, male, female, or trans, that opposes feminist ideology, regardless of whether or not they're liberal or conservative. Twitter is unethically banning accounts, unfollowing users from targeted accounts, blocking users from viewing those targeted accounts, while fraudulently blaming those targeted accounts for the blocks, falsely flagging followers as bots, and then, once those followers are falsely flagged as a bot, they're locked out of their own accounts. Twitter's narcissistic discrimination of those who oppose feminist bigotry is so out of control, they've not only targeted U.S. federal congressmen, but the President of the United States himself. Now, I don't expect Twitter to restore my account, even though it's the ethical thing to do, but this is because I learned long ago, feminists and their supporters will discriminate against anyone who opposes their bigotry, including other women and trans women, including masculine presenting transgender lesbians such as myself. Further, when called out on their unethical conduct, a feminist response is to avoid responsibility while doubling down on hypocrisy. As a major supporter of feminist ideology, I expect Twitter to double down as well. However, if they choose to do so, it'll be this bigotry that eventually kills their platform and destroys their business. In closing, always remember, feminist lies matter. If you've enjoyed this video, found it educational or insightful, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. You can also support my work on Patreon. And in case I'm targeted by YouTube, I mirror all my content on BitChute and MGTOW.com. Further, you can always find me at MissandryToday.com, where you can contact me directly. And in addition, you can direct message me on Gab or Minds.com. All the links are in the description. I'm DDJ, and this has been your dose of Misandry Today.